Welcome to Child Care Rockstar Radio. I am your host, Chris Murray. Child care leaders around the globe are breaking through challenges, leading the way in innovation, testing new best practices, and impacting children and families in a much more powerful and positive way than ever before. Each week, join me for interviews with early childhood leaders and experts that will leave you inspired to become the next child care rock star. Now, let's go. This is Child Care Rockstar Radio, episode 138, featuring Mr. Ty, the child care whisperer. I am so happy that you are listening to this episode today. Welcome on in to the podcast. I am Chris Murray, your host of Child Care Rockstar Radio, and we are counting down the episodes towards the end of 2022, y'all, and I am so excited for today's episode, uh, I'm going to introduce you, if you don't know, about Mr. Ty, the amazing child care whisperer. I am feeling very blessed to be the one to introduce you to him and bring him into your world. Uh, today's episode is called Real Talk About ECE Leadership, and we dive into what directors need most at this time in our world on this journey together, uh, post pandemic, all the things, all the stress, uh, labor crisis, uh, political craziness. And um, let's put all that aside, shall we? (laughs) And I invite you to just come on in and spend about 40 minutes with me uh, here and and stay focused with me. Um, One thing that I remind everybody to do when they're with me on a training is to figure out a way to disconnect from the noise of your day. And so I'll just invite you to do that right now. Settle in with me. This is a not to be missed episode and uh, I can't wait to share it with you, but I want you to be paying attention. And I know that we are competing for a lot that is pulling at your attention. So what I always advise is uh, either listen in the car, go out to your car, sit in your parking lot of your childcare center if you need to, Uh, Put sticky notes on your desk, uh, on your uh, door of your office, if you have a door, and um, try to find a quiet spot to dive in and take notes from the podcast. Uh, You will, you could change your business from a six to seven to eight figure business just by what we share on this podcast. And it's all here for you, um, for the taking. Uh, So, so let's dive into that. I want to give you just a few highlights of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, Of course, we're going to meet Mr. Ty and I'm going to read to you his, um, uh, his story as written by him from his website. And this is a young man from Atlanta who um, has been on a journey to make a difference in the world of children. And through that journey also found a gift. He has a unique gift to cut through um, the, the chaos, the junk, the, the mindset limiters that may be holding you back and help you dive into a place of love, passion, and joy and reclaim your passion about your chosen profession here in the world of early childhood. He and I definitely have some real talk around holding true to your policies. First of all, having policies that are written and managed and used um, and not just put in a binder on a shelf somewhere, but actually living and breathing your policies, bringing them to life and, and helping them help you using them to support you in this journey. And I think many, many, many of us are not utilizing, um, refreshing, developing, training on, onboarding to, and holding people accountable to your policies. And, because we're loving people, we're heart centered people. And sometimes we don't want to be, uh, we don't want to have those hard conversations or we feel pulled in our heart to not manage to our policies. But today we're going to talk all about that topic and so much more here on the podcast. Um, I have been traveling a ton. When you listen to this episode, if you're listening to it live, I will have just gotten back from Hawaii or actually I'll still be in the middle of my journey. I'm going to a spiritual um, rest, restorative retreat with Eckhart Tolle. Tolle. He is one of the world's um, leading 
spiritual teachers. He's written The Power of Now and A New Earth. He has been featured uh, on Oprah's uh, Super Soul Sundays series. He's in her many of her um, podcasts and, and platforms. So Oprah absolutely adores Eckhart, as do I. And um, we're going to Maui, y'all. We're all going uh, on a retreat to get away and uh, have a spiritual um, deep dive. Uh, it's the name of the retreat is called the depths of being, and I'm going to be diving into the depths of my essence of my core of my limitations of the things that hold me back and trying to let go and continue to just to do deep work, deep, deep work on the beach in Maui. So uh, one of my favorite things of all times that I've mentioned maybe a couple times on this podcast is sea turtles, and I love to snorkel with sea turtles. I got to do it twice in March when we took our empire members for our empire retreat to Maui, uh, to uh, Waikiki rather. And I uh, snorkeled with turtles with my daughter holding hands. And um, that was one of my best experiences for 2022. And there have been many, uh, this past year has been one of the best years of my life. And I hope it's been the same for you as well. I know it's been a hard year, but through hard things and through increased effort, to break through the barriers in our life and our business, we find ourselves, we find ourselves stronger, more resilient, and, um, and a new, sometimes a new path emerges. And so that's what's been going on for me in 2022. I just came back from the Country Music Awards. I was very blessed to get a VIP ticket for myself and my daughter and a couple other of our teammates to uh, attend and um, experience Nashville in a whole new way. I, haven't really ever been a country music fan, I will say. I, ever since being in my teens, all the way through my musical fanhood journey, and also being a part-time DJ at two public radio stations, I have always said, what kind of music do you love, Chris? I love all music, from opera and classical to rock and pop and hip-hop but I've never been much of a country fan. Well, this past week, two days ago, when I was in Nashville at the Country Music Awards, I think I kind of fell in love with country music. It was, it was just an amazing experience. And also to have all that talent under one roof was incredible. So if you, if you ca caught it on TV, uh, you may or may not have seen, seen us in the audience, probably not, because we had pretty high seats. We were in a hospitality suite, but, um, we felt like celebrities. We were living at large and having a great time. So that's just a little bit about my personal journey, what I've been up to. And um, of course, the Child Care Success Summit in Nashville, the best I think we've ever done, by and far more good feedback and mind blowing feedback from people that were in the audience. The speakers were the best we've ever had. And Lisa Nichols brought the house down. So Tonka Tonka, yes, yes. If you were there, you know what I'm talking about. And if you missed it, that's cool. But we really want to see you next year in Orlando. So much more about that to come later on. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about, I have two friends today that are helping make this podcast real and make it uh, coming to you. And one of those friends is Child Care Seer. Child Care Seer is one of the newest child care management software platforms in the industry uh, today. Uh, they've only been around for six to 12 months and they're amazing. They are helping leaders see future availability. They're helping you predict and project your classroom management and, and all of the um, specific enrollment that you have uh, in future. And so they're showing you open spots for each hour of the day. Uh, if you wanna offer flexible care, Child Care Sierra supports full-time, part-time drop-in and hourly care options with their management platform. Uh, they offer different ways to pay with built-in billing. Check out the detailed scheduling tool, parent engagement and waitlist management features. If you missed Sierra at the summit and they were one of our diamond partner sponsors. Um, we're very blessed to have them in the fold. Visit childcareseer.com and start a free version today. That's childcareseer, S-E-E-R.com. And stop running your center thinking about today and let Seer change your tomorrow. 
Uh, our other friends uh, are PB and J TV, and I have known Rick and Bobby for um, about 12 years, 13 years. Really, we started on this journey together at about the same time in this industry. And PB and J TV is a top of the tech platform for video streaming and uh, parent camera uh, support. So if you're interested in video streaming, check out PB and J TV to learn more about providing a best in class online streaming experience for you and your families. With almost 15 years of industry experience and backed by the latest in platform securities and program features, I strongly encourage you to set up a quick five minute discovery call. And you can mention me, Chris Murray, or the Child Care Success Summit and get 10% off a new HD system and enjoy a free server integration into your existing camera. Super cool. Uh, these guys are super pros and they will take care of you. Visit them online at pbnj.tv. That's PB, the letter N is in Nancy, J.tv. All right, thanks guys. Really appreciate um you helping support this podcast so with that i would like to go ahead and introduce you to mr ty the child care whisperer and let's learn more about him so in his own words he uh, is from atlanta uh, he's a native of south carolina he's living in atlanta now and here is his story in his own words it was during a pandemic that God gave me a vision and the resources to birth a business. A native of South Carolina, I attended Voorhees College, where I majored in early childhood education. I believe that faith, passion, and education is the key to achieving all of your goals. My professional experience spans from managing privately owned and corporate child care centers with enrollments ranging from 80 to 200 and a staff of over 20 employees. He's got experience as a pre-K teacher, assistant director, director of curriculum, and center director, and holds many years of hands-on experience. He assisted his mom at her child care center, so he's a legacy child care professional, uh, from preteen to young adult years, and under the auspices of his mother, learned how to serve with pristine integrity and to always remember that God is the key to all things. She groomed me for this while in college. I also worked at a child care center to continue my expertise. To that end, I aim to empower directors while aiding them on the journey to take their centers to the next level of becoming the standard by which others are measured. So I cannot wait to introduce you to this young man. We also talk about men in early childhood and how to support and be advocates for guys, more guys in childcare. We need to broaden this field out. We need to change the mindset and figure out ways, specific strategies, in my opinion, to get more young men into this world of early childhood education. And that will solve a lot of our pain points as well as a more uh, vibrant and diverse labor force. So with that, uh, let me welcome you uh, with a big embrace, real talk about ECE leadership here on Child Care Rockstar Radio with the Child Care Whisperer. Let's go. Welcome back, everybody, to Child Care Rockstar Radio. This is Chris, your host, and I am very excited today because I am going to bring you an incredible gentleman. His name is Mr. Ty, otherwise known as the Child Care Whisperer. Mr. Ty, what's going on? Nothing, nothing. Excited to be here. Excited that you uh, reached out to me to have me as a guest on your podcast. It is truly an honor to, uh, to be talking with the Chris Murray. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am so excited to have you here. Um, uh, where are you right now, by I'm the way? Atlanta. Where? I'm in Atlanta. In Atlanta, very good. And um, are you from Georgia? Tell us a little bit more about your background and more about you. Uh, no, ma'am, I am from South Carolina, a small town in South Carolina. I'm, uh, it's called Mullins, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, I moved to Georgia in 2016 to help my mother uh, with her. Uh, she got hurt at work, so she needed back to get it held back and forth to her appointments. And I ended up staying here in Georgia. All right. And how did you get into this amazing world of early childhood? education 
Well, it started um, under my in my mother. Uh, she converted her two car our two car garage to a childcare center. And uh, when I told her, I said, "Mom, I want to go to college, but I don't know if I want to be a teacher or I want to be a judge." She said, "Well, you're too biased to be a judge, so go ahead and be to be a teacher." So I went. <laughs> to major. I went on to major. The, the truth is, um, when I went to college, my first major was not early childhood education. It was elementary education, but mm-hmm. my, my college dropped the major. So those credits transferred easily to early childhood education. And I just stuck with it. Love it. And so you've been working in the field since you graduated. So a handful of years. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Right. Um, I'm really glad that you didn't go get your law degree and become a judge. Why? (laughs) (laughs) Because when I I watch all those legal shows, I just seems I feels like that's not that fun of a career. I feel like you definitely chose the more fun path in my opinion. Yeah. 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 I think I get more hugs this way from the children. So yeah, you're right. (laughs) For sure. For sure. Uh, Tell us what you're doing with regard to speaking, training, consulting, the child care whisper. Tell us more about that brand and what you're doing there. Um, So the Child Care Whisper is a brand that is is created to be a safe space for directors, um, for them to learn and grow. I want the directors that are trained, I encourage them to be vulnerable, to be themselves so that we can make sure that they are the most effective leader that they can be. And that is what my whole platform is for, as well as promoting men in child care. But um, most of my struggles were when I was a director. So I know the back end of it and how you still have to put on that face that, you know, that represents the business when, you know, you may be having a lot going on personally. And I wanted to create that space where we can talk about that and grow. Mm -hmm. And so you actually um, work with train coach directors and you you actually also travel to schools and you do presentations, right, and help train them on site? Yes, ma'am, I do. Awesome. Do you have like a special lane zone, superpower, anything where you really specialize in that you feel is like your secret sauce? Um, I think my secret sauce is I really build great relationships with families. Um, I am able to connect with mom, dad, grandmother. I, that is that is my secret sauce. Um, I, w- I remember when I worked for uh, kinder care, they were always asked my director, what is, we're all directors, what is your purple cow? And my director would always say that her assistant director built great relationships with family. So that is my, my secret sauce. Love that. Um, what is something about you that not that many people know a fun fact, a little known fun fact that you'd like to share? Um, a little known fun, well, it's not known, but it's going to be weird, but I don't like pulling locked doors. I know that's weird, but I is that's just something about me that I do not. That's a fun thing. I don't like pulling locked doors. <laughs> All right. That's interesting. <laughs> yes, I know it does something to me. It makes me cringe. <laughs> it's like nails on the chalkboard. Yeah, and I just lock it. I want to get in. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So you must be a very open hearted, open person because you don't like the locks. Yeah, I do not like I'm gonna locks. I'm gonna take that as a um, a, a euphemism for your personality. No, I never looked at it like that, but yes, it's actually true. I do not, I'm very open. I, I try to keep it just like it's, I keep an open door policy. <laughs> nice. I love that. Well, and that's a big part of relationship building. Um, I want to dive in on this episode, Mr. Ty, with men in child care. And uh, I also want to dive in on the relationship building piece and on your superpower. So we'll come back to those here in a little bit. Um, Tell us a little bit about um, the impacts in your life so far. You're a young guy, but who has had the biggest impact on your professional success so far and why? Um, I would have to say my, I call her my second mom. Um, her name is Eugia Cannon. And I say that because she was the first person to give me a, a job. So I actually started in childcare while I was still in college. Because when I came to Atlanta to help my mom, I was still in college and I started doing things online. And that is where I learned like how to work for other people. Because it's always been my mom or I would volunteer at child care centers. But under her, I really got to teach. I really got to learn. And that is where it all started off from as a private pre-K teacher on to director of curriculum, now the director's coach. So that is where it all started from, from my professional years. I love that. So with your perspective as an educator and teacher, I want to dive into um, 
the relationship between the teacher and the director. I want to dive into from a teacher's perspective, how can leaders be better for teachers? How, as a teacher, what have you noticed and said and shared with these directors you're coaching for sitting in the teacher role? I wish that my leader would fill in the blank. How can leaders be and directors be better for their teachers? Um, I think the, I really, first I would say that I believe that every, every director should have spent time in the classroom as a teacher. And when I, and to go on from that is to remember how you feel. Then you have to remember that everybody is different. We, I think a lot of directors fall short when they, if, for an example, if I say, go take the trash out, right? I can say to Miss, Miss, to Miss Chris that go take the trash out and she gets it immediately. However, if I say it to Miss Robin, she may not get it. Maybe I gotta show her how to take the trash out. And I think that te- directors have to learn to give each, each teacher an a la carte experience. That way you understand that person. I think the biggest part that we're missing is the fact that you can relate and the fact that you understand. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Um, having not a one size fits all approach in your leadership and your communication style is basically what you're saying. Customize the experience for your employee, just like you would for the child and the parent. Absolutely. And I think we forget about that as leaders and business owners, you know? Because we're so focused on the children. And I tell people all the time that, you know, yes, the children, they are the heart of the business, but the teachers are the blood. They the what keep it going. They will keep it, you know, keep the things running like a world oil machine. So we have to make sure that we're catering to them just like we do the children. Yeah. On the flip side of that, to play devil's advocate, people that are listening might be like, well, but I have my, my, my checklists, my how-tos, my training, my employee manuals, my documentation for how licensing wants us to take out the trash to use as an example. So while we have flexibility in how we communicate to employees, some things are just cut and dry, you Mm -hmm. know? Um, So I think that there's a balancing potentially between meeting someone where they are and their style, but also trying to hold people accountable to the checklist for lack of a better word, you know? So talk a little bit about that. Ms. Chris, you said one of my favorite words. I don't know how, how closely you follow me, but accountability is one of my favorite words that I preach. And um, I would answer that question by saying you're absolutely right. Uh, one thing to know about me, if you don't know, is that I am a policy man. However, I understand also that in order to lead, lead people effectively, you must be able to connect with those people. You must build work relationships. So I can go in and I can tell you the policy. And because you understand me from a work perspective, you are more inclined to do it because you know me. I tell mm-hmm. people all the time that that uh, communication builds relationships and relationships build understanding. So if you are communicating with your staff and you're building those relationships, when you have to present those policies, they understand because they understand you. I love that. Also, as a leader, when you're able to inspire and motivate your folks and usually using inspiration and love to help motivate them and lead them, I think is hugely powerful in an early childhood environment. So talk a little bit more about how you lead with inspiration and with love and passion, because it's obviously it comes through uh, speaking with you and seeing all of your stuff online. So talk a little bit more about that. Um, I, I had to learn when, when I was homeless, I learned to leave my personal problems at the door. Um, I remember when I, I reached back out, when I first started Childcare Whisper, I reached out to one of my teachers to give me a review. And she said, I never knew when Mrs. Ty was sad because he always came down the hallway smiling to make sure that we were okay. And I think that is a part of being a director. I learned to deny myself to make sure that my team was okay. And maybe that is a superpower also, because that's something that I honestly did. They never knew that what I had outside was all that I had and I'm in here working to make sure that they were okay. So I just, I led by example. I gave people, I may try to make people feel the way I wanted to feel when I was a teacher. Um, that made me, hey, instead of telling them to take the trash out, I may have taken it out for them. Um, right. that's, just how I, that's just how I operated. And in return, they were willing to do anything for me because I was always there for them. Yeah, I think that's one really important thing is that as leaders, we have to be willing to do any tasks that we're asking our people to do. Nothing is beneath us as the owner or the director of that school. Um, Now, hold a second, back up the truck for a minute. Did you just say that you were homeless? Did I hear that right? (laughs) I did, I was. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, no, I'm not going to let that blow by. <laughs> so do you see, you do, I'm assuming you tell that story out in public. I do, I do tell it. <laughs> I do tell the story. Yes, okay. I, I was homeless. Um, I was working for kinder care uh, education and I... We all know that you don't make that much in, in child care, right? And then you don't make that much uh, compared to the cost of living and stuff in Atlanta. So things got really dark for me. Um, <clears throat> and yes, I was homeless. And there were times when I was the closing director and I would iron my clothes at night and lay them in my backseat underneath my suitcase so that they would still keep the iron, the, the wrinkle free and then get up in, and get up in the morning, go to LA Fitness, take a shower and then head to work. Wow. Um, I, I did that. And I still, even though that was the case, I still put my best foot forward. So, uh, yeah, it was, but it was the process, Miss Chris. Like, it was the process of getting to this very moment right here. Um, so, I, although I'm able to laugh about those moments now because I look back and I say, wow, God was really up to something. So, I, that, that's how I, I get through it. Like, that's how I'm glad that I pushed through those, those moments. Yeah. I mean, every time we have something happen to us that is not favorable or could be seen as negative or super challenging or scary or even just not not good. Well, I feel that the universe is inviting us to um, walk through that journey so that we can inspire others. Absolutely. And the, there is some level of support that's being given to us, even though it might not feel supportive to be homeless in that moment, either it supported you by making you more resilient, that you're able to tell that story from stage, you're able to inspire people, you learn some things about how to be crafty and make more with less when you were homeless, living in your car, I'm assuming. And um, yeah, that's, that's, that's. It taught me so I, I have one teacher at that same school and she would always tell me, your smile is going to make you a millionaire, right? And it taught me that to always see the bright side of whatever situation that you're in. Because if you sit and you dwell on what it is at that moment, you will never be able to push through. So I, I, I use my smile. I use my workplace. I use the kids. I use the teachers to help me get through those moments. And that is how I overcame it. And I, I, tell, I tell directors all the time, if you're struggling in your personal life, when you cross over that door into your workplace, make that your free space. Have a, enjoy it. Take that moment to, you know, leave that alone and you pick it back up when you, when you get off. But allow yourself that moment to be free and enjoy that space. So that's what I did. Yeah. So transitioning to the topic of men and child care, since that's one of your specializations and topics that you kind of stand for. Um, we have talked about this topic before on the podcast, and I have met only a handful of men who are working in the setting who have, you know, been able to um, be supported by their leadership, be supported by parents. You know, a lot of times guys in childcare parents get nervous, right? Let's just say it for what it is. So unfortunately with our industry, women being the natural caregivers of our planet, of how we've come up, the gender roles that we have had, um, this is where we are. We're, we're a very, very, very small, I don't know if you know the percentage, but the overall number of professionals in our field, you know, I don't even know if less than 5% at the teacher level might be, might be guys. Mm -hmm. Um, I have one gentleman I remember very, very clearly in Roanoke, Virginia. He was a teacher at Honey Tree Preschools. Shout out to Honey Tree. Mm -hmm. And um, amazing guy. He ran the after school program and all the kids loved him so much. Uh, I forget his name was Mr. Ben or Mr. Something. African-American gentleman. So great. And he was doing homework clubs. And he was doing a cooking club and he was helping them with their struggles in first, second and third grade. And he was really a father figure for those kids too. Um, and I saw them just glom onto him, like, you know, like white on rice, shall we say. And so, uh, so, so tell me more about, about men in childcare. What, what is, what are some things that you want the audience to know and to sh either share your journey or your experience or, or just thoughts around it? Oh, my journey has been interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I believe that that men are very, 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 very crucial to the childcare industry. Um, most most kids 
don't have a father figure at home. And that is why when when a male walks in the room and he can say something one time, they automatically do it. It's because it's that present that they're not accustomed to, right? And when you have that, it makes them gravitate to you more. I'll never forget it was one time um, I was my, it was my after school student and he had his shirt buttoned up all the way to the top. I said, why is your shirt buttoned up to the top like that? He said, because I want to be like you, Mr. Ty. And that was the moment when I realized like it's, it's bigger than me. It's bigger mm-hmm. than me. And when I say my, my experience, I've had an experience. Um, I go back to Miss G again. When I first started, I remember her losing teachers. I remember her losing parents, but she knew that I could bring something valuable to her organization. So she took those losses. Um, Even today, um, we talk about being a male, we talk about being African-American, but being a male that lives an alternative lifestyle presents another uh, layer to that. So it, it, it yeah it has been it has been an adventure. Um, I've been called names out of out been called out of my name, um, but once again, to Miss Eugenia, you know she's always that person that hey you're not gonna do that here, you know. So it's it's been a journey, but it's it's it's, it's still rewarding to see the kids, the hugs when they get and how they really gravitate to you. It's it's needed. Yeah. So are you like actively helping leaders? Uh, change my parents' mindsets around this issue, or like, are you doing anything actively to try to help promote more men in childcare? Well, I, that's why I'm, I try to make sure, like, when I post on the childcare whisper page, I also do it on my other my my private pages also, so that it it becomes more of a norm. Um, yes, so that I just use my stage, no matter what, all of my platforms mm-hmm. have me in childcare in it. And, you know, it may not be that I have all of these followers, but this person or that person, that person or somebody else, and it gets out. And I've started to see more men in childcare. Um, not, I don't know if they're coming out now, but I've seen more. I've seen more centers hire men or men apply. And I, that, that, that does my heart good. Yeah. So I love that, uh, Mr. Ty. It's like, having the journey of our society change and things become more normative over the years. Right. So now our openness to different lifestyles and um, different things are is much more open than it was 50 years ago, even 20 years ago. So I love that because as you start continue to, to, to be in front of people and, and show that example, it will become more normalized. So I love that. That's really, really powerful. Um, Tell us a little bit about what it was like working alongside your mom in her child care center. What did you learn or what were some things that you uh, either lessons learned or um, just insights from that? Um, So with working under my mom, I'm going to tell you, that's where the classroom staging started. That's where all of those things started because I remember going into that garage and just changing stuff around because I wanted it to look different, right? And now I change classrooms around all the time. And it, my, working under my mom taught me how to be resilient. Um, during that time, my mother was going through a difficult marriage, and that is actually how I ended up working in the child care because I was that person that said, hey, mom, go take a break. I, I run the child care center. So it taught me that your purpose is bigger than your now. So therefore you have to make sure that you keep your purpose ahead of you and that you fight for it. So my mother taught me how to fight. Working in the child care center taught me how to fight. And that's why when it came to those things with the with the, the male and all of that and the third, I was okay because I already knew how to be resilient. I knew mm-hmm. how to keep going because I knew what my purpose was. Mm-hmm. So bringing that resiliency into the classroom, how do you deal with challenging behaviors? We have so many more challenging behaviors in the classroom post COVID I've been told and am seeing. So um, in terms of those kids that need that a little extra attention or kids that are having a really difficult time when things don't go their way, what are some of your secret magic because i know you have some you just sparkle it on kids and and help them get over that so tell get, give us the give us the goods you know the the same way i tell you about better relationship with the teachers i feel that way with the students also miss chris i really like if a child is crying i literally get on my knees 
hug them. Hey, what's wrong? Tell me what's wrong. I want to help you, but I can't help you if you're crying. Mr. Ty wants to know. And some way, somehow, they'll start pointing or they'll start doing that in the third. And I don't make the person that made them cry feel bad because then that's going to be a time when they want to cry too and they want to talk to me. I just explain the situation, right? I think that a lot of times teachers get upset instead of trying to get an understanding. So when we under, when I sit down and I understand and I laugh and I talk with them and I show up to their baseball games and so forth and so on, that makes them then trust me more. Mm -hmm. And you have to build that trust with children. If they don't trust you, they'll never open up to you. Love that. Uh, so that leads in perfectly to relationship building, which is your super, your superpower, okay? So with relationships, um, they can be challenging. You can have, have to have hard conversations. You can have to face a difficult, um, emotion or a difficult situation with a teacher when they have to, uh, when you have to, ha you know, sit them down and actually potentially you could even have to let them go, even though you have a beautiful relationship with them, but they keep not following your lead. They keep not holding themselves accountable to what you're leading them to. So talk a little bit about relationships. Let's first talk about the director teacher relationship. How can we be better relationship builders in our schools between directors and teachers? Um, I would say that one, I, to always speak policy, even though they're your friend, you should, everything that you say should always be able to be found in either your state rec, uh, handbook or your employee handbook. That way, they're not angry with you. They're angry with the policy. Right. Change policy. So and when it comes down to you having those difficult conversations, once again, they're not angry with you. They're angry with the policy. And at the end of the day, you have to uphold the policy. Yep. And anybody that you build a relationship with should understand that. And in the event that you don't, then I love that Jay taught me this, that you said that you have to release them to the universe. So <laughs> when you release them to the universe, hey, you, as long as you did your part, I tell my team all the time, as long as you cross your teeth and dot your eyes, I always have your back. And that's what... And I mean that, but I'm always going to, I'm always going to speak policy. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Love that. That's a huge lesson. Almost all the landmines that I see people walking into is because they didn't follow their policy. They didn't up, uphold their policy. Yep. I see that so much um, it's, it's, as I travel child care center and travel to different locations. That's the one thing when I, when you get down to the root of it. Yeah. You, you didn't uphold your policy. And I tell them all the time, just because you were the policy maker, that doesn't mean you should make the, uh, the, the executive decision to change it because someone is unhappy. You still enforce the policy. And that is a lot of the issues that I see when I'm traveling. Yes, or they don't have a policy. Or they don't have a policy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So there's that. So you guys need to take a writer downer there and go take action on making sure that you're upholding your policies and you have good policies on all the different aspects of your center. One of the things that was a writer downer for me early days was actually a client taught me this. She said, anytime you have an issue with an employee, it's either a policy issue or a training issue. And either they haven't been trained to the policy or you don't, or your policy is either broken, not clear, or you don't have one, right? So there's actually an issue with the actual policy itself that needs to be rewritten and retaught, or it's a training issue and that person isn't properly trained about that policy. And that's it. I mean, and that probably covers 98% mm -hmm. of, of issues with employees. However, I added one more. Okay. I said, or it's a leadership issue like a cultural issue where we're leading in a way that either we're not enforcing the policy or we're treating people differently inside of our program. We're giving special favors to some, not to others, right? So we've got uh, inconsistent leadership that maybe not is not aligning with us. So uh, how do you feel about, about that statement? Do you agree? Um, I do agree. Um, however, I... Being in, in the child, because I manage a child care center here in Georgia, um, and being in it, I can honestly say that also, in addition to that, nowadays, I, I found that some teachers have a spirit of entitlement. Mm -hmm. Even that goes back to your policy as well, 
So when they have that, once again, you have to speak policy because I literally sat in a meeting with a teacher yesterday and I was just like, this can't be real. Like, it's just, this, this just can't be real. But <laughs> it, it, it was real. It was real. And she was sincere about it. And it wasn't a policy issue. It was a, an insubordination issue. But then, once again, like we've been saying, we have to uphold the policy um, so that the next person knows that you cannot do that. So, yes, I agree with this. Yeah. So with regard to that, with regard to today's interesting dynamics in the workforce with employees uh, and our labor shortage, which has caused because potential employees know that they're in the driver's seat and we're not Mm -hmm. because we need them more than they need us. Right. Potentially, because we have to cover ratio and keep our business open and alive. Mm -hmm. Um, The entitlement piece comes in. Yeah that you're talking about. So how can we like, almost like stop that at the door? Like when you're going to come into this school, you have to reset their mindset that this is not a place, this is not an entitlement zone, right? How do you do that? Miss Chris, I think that starts with the interview. Um, a lot of people think that I am mean, but Miss Chris, I-, I- <laughs> Really? I don't think you seem mean. I think you seem like a sweetheart. Let me tell you why. They think that I'm mean because I- I stick to the policy. Uh-huh. And Mr. Ty, you're so black and white. No, 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 no. Because when I enter that gray area, I enter new, a new set of problems that I do not want. That's right. So I went from the interview. If you if your interview is today and you come and tell me that, oh, you're going to be a little late or, oh, I need to reschedule, you're not going to get that second chance from me. Because that shows me, how can you miss your interview? If, what if this was your first day of work? That's a no for me. And then within your, when you're going through your onboarding process, whether it be your 90 day, your 60 day, your 30 day, whatever it is, you need to let them know that the first thing you're gone. You can, if you're already, if you were already struggling, which prompts you to put out an ad and you were making it do what it had, what you needed it to do before this person, don't relax the standard because you need that person. That's right. It starts out in that beginning stage. We give too much leeway. And I just let them know, I will, I will fire you. <laughs> and that's just, what it is. that's just what it is. But they say that I mean, Miss uh, Miss Chris, hmm. almost every staff member that I have either follows me, loves me to death, and will do anything for me. That's right. Because I, I held them accountable. I gave, ch- adults are just like children. They need structure. They are yep. longing for it. They're only acting crazy because you allow them. That's right. That's right. That's to me, that's the biggest powerful lesson of this whole conversation is what you just said. We as leaders are allowing the behavior to happen. And I can't even tell you the number of times clients have come to me and like, but, but they're doing this and they're doing that. I'm like, cause you're letting them, you're letting them walk all over you. What? Hello. Who's running the store? You know? So I love that because the thing is, is that the people that are with you will follow you to the ends of the earth. Follow you. Because they love, they love you. Because also you're protecting them with that structure. You're only letting people in the building that they know are going to perform at an A or B level, which then helps their job be easier. Their day is easier. Absolutely. Right? They don't have to deal with gossip and bad behaviors and all that crap. Because you're because they're out. Because Mr. Ty ain't going to play, play with that, right? And I learned that at the last center that I was working at. I worked for Creme de la Creme. I don't know if you're familiar with that. I am. But Miss Chris, I had a dynamic team, and I mean dynamic. And when they came in, they did not. If they, if somebody started and they weren't pulling their weight, oh, they were coming to complain because they knew that they would do whatever it took for their job. So you're not going to come in and not pull your weight when we go. We, we're a team here, and I learned that. I learned to start from the beginning. Don't bring somebody on your team that's going to cause it to derail. Don't do that. You make sure that you, you keep, you uphold the standard because your other team members are looking for that. Mm-hmm. Well, that that's powerful. I love that. Fantastic. No wonder Tamina loves you <laughs> because she doesn't, she's like, boom. I mean, oh, yeah, she's I HR that. policies, yeah. black and white. Let's go. You know, you got it. So I love that. Uh, we're ta- shout out to you, coach T. Yeah. Shout out to you. She's, I, when I met her, and she's, I was like, oh, I like her. she has really good shoes too um 
So you'll see that in Nashville because she'll probably bring out, she'll slay with a whole new fresh uh, out wardrobe enhancements in, in Nashville. I don't know. I don't when know. I saw last year, I saw you uh, kind of stylish too last year. I said, Miss Chris, better come on, give us a bun. And a, and a, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have been known to also pull out some style points. So thank you very much for noticing that. Um, so we're going to uh, go kind of ramp down towards our clothes. Um, Tell us, any, is there anything that you wish so far that you have done differently in your journey? Maybe you could have done earlier differently, anything? Yes, I, I wish that I would have, from the beginning, um, I would have had a different, I had the mindset that I have now. Then. Um, <clears throat> I think I can honestly say like most people, although I had the passion for childcare and I poured that into wherever role that I was in, I didn't have the mindset that I was going to make a change, right? I and I and the change needed to be outside of my classroom, right? I needed to make a change to everybody that was at the childcare facility that I was at. And I wish I would have had that mindset back then um, because I did my thing in the classroom, right? I made sure that my kids were okay. I made sure that the parents were happy. But what about in the one-year-old room where I wasn't the teacher at or the two-year-old room where I wasn't the teacher at? I still had that obligation to make sure that those kids were happy also. And that's why I love what I do now. Love that. Um... What's down the road for you? Where are you headed? And uh, for the remainder of 2022, I know we're going to see each other in a month in Nashville, less than a month, uh, for the remainder of the year and into 2023. What's, what's, what does your future hold, my friend? Well, um, in December, I'm releasing my third book. Um, and then in January, I'm gonna, January, I'm going to have another book signing. I'm going to release my uh, Leadership Institute for Directors. So the end of this year, going into next year, will be a big, a big year, a big year. Now, are you working with um, beloved multi-podcast uh, guest of mine, Vernon Mason? Because he's got his Leadership Institute for Directors, too. Are you guys working together at all, Le Vernon Mason? No, Do you know I him? I, think I will. I will try to reach out to him. Oh yes, you must know Vernon. So I'm going to connect you because okay. he's in North Carolina and he's amazing. He re sold his schools, um, but he also has a director program. So you guys should join forces. Just saying, just putting it out there. Uh, <laughs> so tell me more about your books because I would love to know the topic of your new book coming out and then the two books that you have out. Tell us more about those. Um, so the first book was 10 Tips for Child Care Center Directors. The second one was 10 Tips for Child Care Center Educators. And the third one is a children's book. Um, and then I'm going to do a fourth one for parents. And the fifth one would be my autobiography. Nice. Love it. Well, I'm working on my autobiography and memoir as well. That's a sneak peek to our listeners because I have not shared that before, Mr. Ty. So I got to hurry up so I can beat you. On no, yours, no, no, because no, no, no. unless it's we like do a co-release, we can release them together. Release them together. Yeah, that'd be yeah, fun. Join, join forces like you're talking with Vernon. Let me tell you, if we join forces on our memoir releases and we did a, a book tour, we would kill it. Yeah. We would, there'd be lines around the block. <laughs> telling you. Awesome. Well, this has been so much fun. I have really, really enjoyed spending time with you today. Any other thoughts before we say goodbye? No, I don't have any more thoughts. I want to thank you again publicly for having me um, on today. It has really, really been a joy. Fantastic. It's been a joy for me as well. Um, what, how can people find you? Um, I'm on all social media platforms as the Child Care Whisperer, as my website is thechildcarewhisperer.com. All right, thechildcarewhisperer.com. And I'm assuming people can find more about your books and your resources on that site. Yes, ma'am. And are they on Amazon too? They are on Amazon as well. Very good. Well, Mr. Ty, it has been amazing getting to know you today. Thank you so much for being here on Child Care Rockstar Radio. It's been, a, it's been a huge blast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I know you got a lot of writer downers from this one, and we will see you next time. Take care and God bless. I hope you liked this episode of Child Care Rockstar Radio. If you did, please share it with someone you know and help spread the word to your friends in our industry and on social media. Childcare business success is my passion and I'm honored to be on this journey with you. As a thank you for listening, 
Learn more about how to grow your business and make more income with our brand new free quiz, the What's My Number One Income Killer quiz, exclusively for preschool and child care owners. Take the quiz today at childcarequiz.com to discover what your number one income killer is and how to solve it. Take care and God bless.